and welcome back for another Marks Moments on Title Tuesdays. FERPTA. Do you know FERPTA like I know FERPTA? Well, you need to. The Foreign Investment and in Real Property Tax Act of what year? 1980. So, for all of you investors or traditional realtors that are out there and you're dealing with contracts, what is FERPTA and where does it apply? Well, in traditional contracts, it's all in your contract and you should know about it. You're in South Florida. We're the land of foreign investors. What is a foreign investor for FERPTA purposes? Anybody that doesn't have a valid green card or is a U.S. citizen. They might have a tax ID number. They might be great people, but they don't have the U.S. as their permanent residency and therefore FERPTA sometimes applies when they're selling a property. Now, there are various different things to worry about in a FERPTA transaction. If you're an investor, please don't think for any reason that FERPTA won't apply to you because sometimes you're going to purchase a property for, for, from a foreign national, and that's okay. You just have to know how it applies to maintain safety for your transaction and make sure that later on you don't get a bill from the IRS because your seller is now out of the country. That's number one. For our traditional real estate investments in your contract, it speaks on FERPTA. What has changed since 1980? Well, in 2015, FERPTA slightly changed. Remember, there's categories to determine um, how much money is withheld or not that we're going to go over briefly. But most importantly, the first question on any purchase that you make or that you represent your buyer on for any purchase is, is this a FERPTA transaction? Are the sellers foreign nationals? Do they qualify pursuant to IRS guidelines as a foreign national? Meaning, are they a citizen or a green card? Are they a permanent citizen, a permanent green card holder, or um, they're not a citizen? So those are what you have to determine. Usually, out of all the, uh, the closings that we do per month, usually we have one, two, three every single month. So this is not an uncommon thing. And when you're purchasing properties as an investor, think about it. Think about what the economy is in some other countries. Think about when you're farming, who you might want to go out and search for. Maybe Canadian nationals, maybe their economy and their dollar is not great right now. What about South America, Brazil? Their economy unfortunately isn't doing great. Try to find those listings and maybe you can sell those properties. Remember, you have to just understand FERPTA. There's a FERPTA addendum for traditional contracts and you need to know as a buyer or you need to know as a listing agent or the seller that these things apply. So the biggest thing is first find out if FERPTA applies. Boom, you're done. Then you have to understand how much the purchase price is because the purchase price under 300,000, the purchase price between 300,000 and a million, and the purchase price for over a million make a difference in the FERPTA process. That's number two. Then you say, okay, Mark, the FERPTA property that we're purchasing right now is under $300,000. And the seller doesn't want to pay the FERPTA withholding. Okay, fine. Now we have to know the intent of the buyer. There's a questionnaire, an affidavit that your buyers will be signing for, for the FERPTA transaction to protect themselves and the seller's going to want it signed to protect them too. It's very simple. It's all out there in all your doc forms and they're going to be presented like around me, like Vanna White, and you're going to see them. We're going to have them here for you. You can call us, you can email us, and don't forget to subscribe. What did I say? subscribe. And don't forget, we're not an attorney's office. We're a title company giving you information to make you a rock star. So what are the categories? Under $300,000, what are um, the IRS guidelines? Well, there is a theory that you have to live there as your permanent residence for two years. Well, that's not true. You have to sign an affidavit that says, and it's very gray, it is not black nor white, it is gray, that says, of the intended time that you're going to use the property for you or your loved ones, close personal family, you have to use it at least half the time that you intend on that affidavit. So in the first two years, if you're going to use the property for 60 days a year, you have to use it for 31 days. That's the nutshell of how you answer the question. So if you're buying a property and you can honestly answer the questions that of whatever time you designate within the first two years that you're going to at least use it for half of that time that you designate between you or your loved ones personal family related stuff that you can answer that properly and then you can sign the affidavit what does that mean that means that the seller based on your affirmation and that affidavit the seller does not have to withhold 
the withholding for IRS and as a title company we follow what is given to us in the affidavit and we don't have to withhold it for them and remit it for them. Now remember that if you for are any reason unsure of what your intentions are you might want to think about signing it because if for the strange reason that that particular file got audited by the IRS and they're going to determine that that seller really owed some tax because they're not a U.S. citizen, they're not paying U.S. taxes, and they are now out of their country, who does the IRS lien? They lien the property, and now you've bought the property. So you have to pay attention to these things, but you don't have to reinvent the wheel. The affidavits are clear into how to handle them. So if you sign the affidavit because you're going to live there full time, or you're going to live there within the specified half the amount of time that you declare, then it's fine. What you can't do is you can't rent it in the first two years. So if you know that you're purchasing right away to rent it, or you're going to rent it some parts of the first two years, you can't sign the affidavit, which means that the seller or the title company for the seller has to withhold not 10% like it used to be, now they have to withhold 15% of the sales price, not the proceeds, the sales price. So if it's $100,000, we have to withhold $15,000. Now, pay attention for the seller side. Does that mean you lose the money? Absolutely not. Never meant that you lose the money. It just meant there's a process to regain the money. And you may be entitled after you work with an accountant, whether it's a Canadian accountant or another foreign uh, national accountant or a US accountant, you can still retain, or get back rather, either all that money or a portion of that. And how do you do that? By presenting all the bills that the accountant's gonna request and what you put into the property since you time you purchased it, et cetera. Very similar to how we would figure perhaps capital gains here. But again, the sellers in these scenarios are not US citizens or are not permanent green card holders. So that's why it's coming up. They're not paying typically US taxes on a regular basis. So they have to, and prudent behavior would be do this while you're in the transaction. You can get all this started for your seller. You don't have to wait until after the transaction. If you're prudent and you're, and you're and a mover and groover like we want you to be, you can get the seller hooked up with an accountant ahead of time and get the process started. And we have seen in this office all the time, and we have many right now, we have seen in this office, I just had one for 78,000 that we collected and we got the certificate from the IRS that says the only obligation is 29,000. Please give the balance back to the seller and give us 29,000. And we've seen 78,000 collected and they said their, uh, the certificate says to give them back the whole 78,000. Nothing is due. Those are for people that are doing their business uh, ahead of time and accurately. And then if for some reason you don't want to as a seller apply for the certificate while we're still involved, then we remit the money upon closing and then you and your accountant apply for a US tax return for that money later on and then they deal with you directly because we no longer have the funds. So there's, some, uh, there's a lot of little intricacies into the process but I don't want you to think for one minute that it's not easy for us to help you through it, okay? This is an easy process. Your obligation is to say to the seller, hey, is this a firm to transaction? Once they say yes or no, then you move forward. So we discuss what a firm to transaction is, we discuss who are the players on each side, and then we discuss for $300,000 and below. But guess what? We wish all your properties are gonna be 300,000 to a million, right? And they come up. Maybe not all the investor properties, but for sure, they come up. Here's what you have to do. If it's 300,000 to a million, it's automatic withholding. Now, the question still remains, how much do you withhold, but it's automatically gonna withhold something. Again, they can potentially get their money back if they apply and they qualify, but we have to withhold either 10% or 15%. Now, just like we have an affidavit for under 300,000, we have an affidavit that says 300 to a million intend to reside. So the same question applies. What is the buyer's intent for 300 to a million? Are they gonna rent it out? Are they going to live there pursuant to the minimum guidelines of IRS? Or are they gonna live there permanently? So if they're gonna live there permanently because this is their residence, great. They sign it and now instead of the seller having to withhold 
they only have to withhold 12, uh, 10%. So obviously, if it's a $300,000 sale, and I only have to withhold $30,000 versus $45,000, the seller's gonna be happy for that too because it's a lot of money. We're talking a lot of money here. We're talking a lot of responsibility here from a title company's perspective. We're talking a lot of responsibility here from the accountant trying to get their money back. So you wanna work with qualified people, you of course email me or call me at Independence Title at any time and we'll refer you to people that we work with that do this very well, very easy, and our job is to do the good work, your job is to ask the questions. So the last category, after all this, FERPTA, under 300, FERPTA, 300 to a million, FERPTA, over a million. Well, guess what? Over a million, doesn't matter. You have to withhold 15%. Doesn't matter what the buyer's gonna do with the property or not, you have to withhold 15% from the transaction. So if there's a million dollar property, and may all your properties be a million dollars, if there's a million dollar property, we have to withhold $150,000. Now, here's the last part of the basic FERPTA lesson that you're getting, so you know. When we withhold any of the amounts of money on the closing statement, it says IRS and the amount. Then we hold it, and we need to know the intent of the seller, whether it's a lot of money or a little amount of money, our job is to know the intent of the seller. So we work with the listing agent, we work with the seller, we work with the seller's attorney, whoever it is, to say, hey, Mr. Seller, what are you doing with this money? Are you, within the next time frame that I'm gonna tell you right now, are you gonna remit the information and the request for a certificate to the IRS? Or are you not gonna do it right now, you're gonna do it later? So here's the basic time frames. When we close on whatever day, we have 19 business days, I'm sorry, 19 calendar days, which is different, 19 calendar days, to remit the money to the IRS, okay? That's our obligation. So if you tell me, Mark, we're not gonna get anything done within those 19 days post-closing, we just remit the money the next day or the day after, we FedEx it to the IRS, we get a confirmation, and we're done. That's our obligation is done. There are paperwork that we deal with in the transaction, but for the most part, we're done with the money because we did what you asked us to do. However, if you say, no, Mark, we're going to remit an application to the IRS for a certificate so that they can determine how much is really coming back to us, we think all, but whatever they can determine, and we want you to hold the money for us, we're gonna do all of that remittance, documentation, mailing to the IRS, confirmation the IRS received it, and we're gonna send you that whole packet so that you, in the state of Florida, can withhold hold that money beyond the 19 days. So if your accountant gets me a nice little package of everything submitted to the IRS with confirmation that the IRS received it because they sent it FedEx or certified mail or whatever, and we put that in our file, then we are allowed to hold that remittance beyond the 19 days. Without it, we're not. And if we don't have it and we held it beyond 19 days and there's a fine, guess who pays the fine? Technically, it's a buyer's responsibility, but you think any buyer is going to be happy with us if we made a mistake and we didn't send the money in on time? So we have to eat the fines. So we don't want fines. We don't do fines well around here. So we're going to do what we need to do within those 19 days. And the little trick is, is that it's not 19 days. It's 20 days. But I tell everyone 19 days because you know you always need another day to FedEx just in case. So don't go telling everyone Mark doesn't know what he's talking about because it's really 20 days. But I know that. Now you know that but we say 19 to everybody. So we are going to need the information from the seller's accountant or whomever to show proof in order to hold the funds. If we don't get it, we're just gonna remit the monies accordingly to the IRS. There is a FERPTA department. This is a routine thing that all prudent title companies and law offices do on a daily basis, and we enjoy the opportunity to share it with you. If you have any questions about this topic or anything else, please make sure to call Mark at Independence Title.